Today we are going to discuss the pathophysiology of acute pulmonary edema or how pulmonary edema occurs in heart failure patients. We have started the topic of edema in patients with cardiac failure. We have already discussed that why peripheral edema, edema in peripheries, why it does not occur in acute heart failure and why peripheral edema occurs in persistent or chronic heart failure. Now today we are going to discuss edema in lungs or pulmonary edema or what is basically the pathophysiology of pulmonary edema. Now normally if we uh, summarize the uh, heart circulation we see that the blood from the peripheries come to the heart in the right atrium from the right atrium blood goes into the right ventricle from the right ventricle blood goes into the lungs here it gets oxygenated the oxygenated blood returns to the left atrium from the left atrium blood goes into the right uh, the left ventricle and from the left ventricle the blood goes into the whole of the body now in the body different tissues and organs basically extract the oxygen and nutrients from the blood and then the deoxygenated blood returns to the heart what happens is that when the heart pumpings become weaker and heart is basically operating below its maximum level now the heart is basically operating below its maximum level but it is able to uh, satisfy the needs of the different tissues and organs but at a lower level because the heart has been damaged now the heart is already damaged if a patient if a patient with damaged heart or a weak heart starts exercise or if there is some fluid overload like increased fluid load due to any reason what happens is that the amount of the amount of fluid that returns to the heart the amount of fluid that returns to the right atrium it increases the preload basically starts increasing and then what happens is that more and more blood the, from the left uh, from the right atrium the blood goes into the left uh, right ventricle and the right ventricle pumps the blood into the lungs now here the heart is weak and it is unable to pump out the blood properly so what happens that blood starts damming or bl blood retention or fluid retention starts to occur in the lungs now the heart the lungs is basically throwing the blood the extra blood the extra fluid the load the fluid load which occurred due to some reason either exercise or due to infusion of extra fluid or due to some emotional stress that excess amount of fluid is pumped into the lungs but the left ventricle the left ventricle is unable to pump excessive blood now it is it is a weak heart it is a weak or a damaged heart it can function in the normal circumstances but it cannot cope with excess fluid that occurs excess load that occurs in exercise or in fluid overload so the blood that is pumped into the lung it starts damming there and then fluid from that blood fluid from that blood starts oozing out into the parenchyma of the lung now these are basically the blood vessels in the lungs these are the blood vessels in the lung outside these blood vessels in the lung are alveoli these are the alveoli or the parenchyma of the lung you can think like these are the lungs this is the parenchyma of the lung in which the oxygenation oxygenation of the blood will occur so what happens that the due to increased amount of blood that is being pumped by the right ventricle into the lungs the pressure in the capillaries the pressure in the capillaries increases so due to the increased pressure fluid starts oozing out into the alveoli now these alveoli these alveoli or the parenchyma of the lung which is basically meant for oxygenation of the blood it gets filled it's it, it gets filled with excess fluid or damming of fluid occur in the lung so it leads to decreased oxygenation it leads to decreased oxygenation of the blood now the blood that starts returning to the heart it is not fully oxygenated it is not fully oxygenated because there is some there is collection of fluid in the lung there is collection of fluid in the lung and that fluid is not allowing proper oxygenation of the blood when that incompletely oxygenated blood returns to the heart now what happens that the, the 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 heart muscle the heart muscle which is already weak which which is already damaged this muscle the heart muscle is now receiving improperly oxygenated blood because the heart muscles the heart muscles themselves they also need oxygenated blood they also need nutrients to work properly when they are being supplied by inappropriately oxygenated or deoxygenated blood their functions become more weak you see the heart is pumping blood into the whole of the body but for pumping the blood for pumping the blood the muscles of the heart basically need energy and that energy comes from the blood which is supplied through some 
blood vessels which is supplied through some blood vessels to the muscles of the heart because they are also uh, active and they also need more nutrients and they also need more oxygen so when they they are not receiving properly oxygenated blood so the heart muscles become more weaker they become more weaker when they become more weaker they are they become their efficiency decreases more and more their efficiency decreases more so the heart was already weaker it could not pump the excess fluid the heart was already weaker but when the fluid load increased the oxygenation process in the lungs become hampered because of the pulmonary edema because of the oozing out of the because of the oozing out of the fluid into the parenchyma of the lung which is basically pulmonary edema now due to this condition the the blood is not fully oxygenated and that deoxygenated blood comes to the heart muscle and the heart is unable to work effectively because the blood that is supplied to the muscles of the heart is not properly oxygenated so it becomes more weaker and when it becomes more weaker its efficiency become decrease its efficiency decreases more and more now what happens when its efficiency uh, decreases more this improperly oxygenated or deoxygenated blood when goes into the periphery it leads to vasodilation in the periphery it leads to vasodilation when vasodilation occurs in the peripheries the blood vessels in the peripheries dilate when they are, they dilate their caliber increase then more fluid more blood starts returning to the heart so the heart was already damaged it was already weak then fluid volume increased the load of fluid on the weak heart increased which led to which led to damming of blood or retention of blood into the lungs which caused acute pulmonary edema and that acute pulmonary edema led to improperly oxy uh, improper oxygenation or deoxygenated blood into the left side of the heart and when the heart muscles they consume that deoxygenated blood they become more weaker when they became more weaker and when the deoxygenated blood starts returning into the periphery the peripheral vessels also started dilating they also started dilating and even in the dilated vessels even more fluid starts returning to the heart even more fluid start returning to the heart when more fluid start become uh, returning to the heart the heart become even more damaged the heart starts becoming more damaged when it became more damaged it led to more fluid collection in the lung it led to more fluid collection into the lung because more fluid is returning here and it is being thrown into the lungs but the left side of the heart is unable because the pressure the power of the muscle the heart muscle is basically mostly used by the left side of the heart because it has to pump against a bigger system the right side of the heart has only to pump the blood into the lungs it does not need that much that much energy it can do it at a lesser energy but the left heart is the bigger heart and it basically pumps the blood into the uh, whole of the body it needs more oxygen more nutrients so when more fluid starts returning to the heart it is damp uh, it is starting uh, collecting into the parenchyma of the lung and the amount of fluid collecting into the parenchyma of the lung in the alveoli of the lung is increasing which basically leads to acute pulmonary edema now this again leads to decreased oxygenation of the blood and that deoxygenated blood again return to the heart and the heart becomes even more damaged when that heart becomes even more damaged then the amount of blood that is pumped into the periphery decreases and the deoxygenated blood returns to the heart it leads to more vasodilation it leads to more vasodilation and then it leads to more fluid returning to the heart and when more fluid start returning to the heart the load of the fluid on the heart again increases again increases and it leads to further damage to the heart so this becomes a vicious cycle this becomes a vicious cycle and this vicious cycle of decreasing efficiency of the heart muscle this vicious cycle of decreasing efficiency of the heart muscle it leads to collection or damming of blood in the lung parenchyma or alveoli of the uh, alveoli of the lungs and that collection of fluid because the pressure in the blood vessels of the lungs starts increasing due to which fluid start going out of the uh, blood vessel into the parenchyma of the lung and it is basically known as acute pulmonary edema and it started because of sudden increase a sudden exercise or sudden increase in the fluid volume or some emotional stimuli so this is basically the pathophysiology of acute pulmonary edema now to treat this condition some aggressive measures have to be taken and the measures may include providing oxygen now because there is fluid in the alveoli and proper oxygenation cannot occur so external oxygen has to be supplied to the patient so that oxygenation process of the blood in the lungs improve so this is one measure which can improve acute pulmonary edema now another thing is to supply diuretics what diuretics will do that it will throw out 
excess fluid in the form of urine. It will throw out excess fluid in the form of urine. So when more fluid go out of the body, the fluid in the uh, parenchyma of the lung or the alveoli of the lung will decrease. So it can basically uh, break down the vicious cycle. It can break down the vicious cycle or the decreasing, uh, the increasing damage that occurs continuously to the heart muscle. So diuretics can also basically help in the um, acute pulmonary edema. Then some of the uh, techniques which has uh, which have been measure, um, mentioned in the book i have never seen it but these uh, uh, techniques include uh, bleeding the patient bleeding so that the fluid volume so that the volume the excess volume that is returning to the right side of the heart it decreases and by uh, tying a tourniquet tourniquet maybe the spelling is wrong so what happens is that when you apply tourniquet to the external blood vessels the amount of uh, by applying tourniquet to the arms and limbs the amount of fluid the veins becomes collapsed so the amount of fluid that returns from the peripheral limb uh, from the limbs the arms and the legs to towards the right atrium also decreases so when the fluid return to the heart decreases it can also decrease the damage to the heart and then uh, a lot of fluid which was basically pumped into the lung and which was being retained into the lung it also decreases so it can also improve basically the pulmonary edema so that's all about the uh, pathophysiology of the acute pulmonary edema and it occurs in a weak heart which is basically exposed to some sudden increase in fluid volume and that fluid volume when comes uh, into the heart it basically lead to damming of excess fluid in the lungs which leads to uh, improper oxygenation of the uh, blood and that improperly oxygenated blood when come back into the left side of the heart it leads to more weakening of the heart when the heart become more weaker it leads to decreased pumping by the heart and when the deoxygenated blood is pumped into the periphery it leads to vasodilation when it leads to vasodilation then vasodilation causes even more fluid returning to the heart when more fluid returns to the heart the load on the heart increases even more and then the pumping effectiveness of the heart decreases even more and then more fluid is pumped into the lungs and the, deox the deoxygenation the oxygenation process of the blood decreases even more in the lung and which leads to even more deoxygenated blood returning to the heart and it makes the heart more weaker so it is basically operating in a cycle which is basically a vicious cycle and it has to be stopped by taking some measures like supplying oxygen to the patient and uh, uh, giving diuretics so that excess fluid is removed from the body and then op applying tourniquets on the limbs so that the fluid that is coming back to the uh, right side of the heart should can be decreased and then bleeding the patient so that volume of the blood decreases and the volume load which is basically coming towards the heart should, should decrease and that's how acute pulmonary edema is tackled we are not going into the details uh, of how exactly the acute pulmonary edema is uh, treated but this was just from the physiology point of view and just to, uh, simply explain the pathophysiology of acute pulmonary edema thanks a lot for watching the video